Okay. Um, I think uh, we can start the first session. Welcome to the first session. As you can see on the program, we start with a keynote speech by Professor João Paulo Oliveira e Costa uh, from the Universidade Nova de Lisboa, the history department. He is a full professor at that university and responsible for the development of Japan Portuguese studies in the early modern period. Uh, he has been involved in this uh, enterprise from the 1990s. He was also founder in 2000 of the Bulletin of Portuguese Japanese Studies, which he directed for several years. I have here a copy uh, of that bulletin. Um, I have asked and uh, Helena has uh, graciously uh, put up uh, a number of issues of that bulletin of Portuguese Japanese studies, which contains many, many interesting studies, which I can uh, recommend fully and with great enthusiasm. Um, so he was the founder of this bulletin of Portuguese Japanese studies, as well as the director for 18 years of the CHAM Center for the Humanities. That is actually the center that um, is now uh, responsible for um, publishing this bulletin, the, the Centro de Historia de Alan Mar, Universidade Nova de Lisboa and Universidade dos Açores. Um, they include about 400 researchers, um, this center, and um, they publish in many, many areas that are related to this uh, general field. We could not have invited uh, a better keynote speaker than Professor João Paulo Oliveira Costa. And I'm very glad and honored that he accepted uh, the invitation. The floor is yours, Professor. Thank you, Professor, and thank you for your kind words. I salute all the colleagues here in the room. Um, it's a pleasure for me to, to be with you and to participate in this conference and to present this, this, opening, this the, the opening lecture. The title should be more complete, maybe this Namban uh, Biombo as a visual resource, resource for history, for, for, for research. But that, that is the point. So what, what I intend to reflect, uh, to, to think a little bit in louder voice with you, is about how the Namban screens, the Biombo, Namban Biombo, can be uh, perceived not as a, a source of history of art, but as a source for history itself. How can we, how can we reconstruct what was the daily life in Nagasaki uh, in the moment that the, the Portuguese were still settled there, were trading there before the Sakoku policy of the Bakufu uh, shogunate? So that is, that is the point. So everybody knows what is a, a biombu nowadays. Uh, at, uh, in early in medieval times in Europe, there, were, there was not such object in, in Europe. Um, and so it was a discovery for, for, the, for the Portuguese who arrived first to, to Japan, uh, because at that time they, had, they were just sailing along Chinese coast, but with a very short interaction with the Chinese. So the, the, the interaction with Japanese was deeper earlier than with, with China. And they, they discovered that in Japan, there was these kind of mobile walls uh, in the perspective that the, the room, that is a multifunctions room, can be uh, uh, rearranged uh, in, in, even in its surface for, for, for a ceremony uh, with the, the support of these, of these mobile walls. When they're in, it's curious because if you see uh, European paintings of the 17th, 18th, 19th century, where we have the testimony already of the, the, the commerce and of the importation, uh, by Europeans, uh, the European elite of Biombu, of these screens, uh, most of them are not used in, in European rooms to, to divide the room in, in, a, in different sectors, but just close to a wall as, as a painting. Because the, the idea of um, um, uh, cutting, cutting the, the, door, the, the rooms with mobile walls is not very normal in Europe, at least at the beginning. So what in Japan, there were for centuries this tradition of painting them in silk and uh, of um, with the different 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 uh, motif, mot motives and, and episodes of history of myths whatever. What is interesting and what the, the collection uh, the, the details that we are going to see is about a specific group of 
uh, screens, which were painted uh, in the early 17th century by some, some artists who have been for sure in Nagasaki. And uh, they show this interaction between the Japanese and these strange people who had arrived a few, a few decades earlier from 1543 onwards. And I'm going to see them and I'm going to, to think, to look at them as um, in the details, not, not, not if what interests me today is, are the details, not, not the, the full picture, in order to see some of, through these, the, the, these details, to see some of the main characteristics of the relations that were established between the Portuguese and the Japanese during the, what we can call the Namban century, so from middle of the 16th century until the middle of the 17th century. First, just a word about uh, the city where this interaction took place, Nagasaki, because it was a city that was founded um, for the great ship, for the Kurofune, that we are going to see in a few moments. So it was a, it was a it was a fishery port, not it, uh, in the Omura Omura area. Uh, it was not a real important in it was not an important position, and uh, it was given to the Portuguese by Omura Sumitada Dom Bartolomeu, the first daimyo of Japan who was baptized in six, 1563, and he gave this this territory. Uh, this is this is this is a picture I took in Nagasaki, in the, cent the historical center of Nagasaki, is something that is still in, in the streets, the, the historical center of Nagasaki, um, remembers all the details of, of this first settlement that was existed there, the first, the first grow of the city from 1571 onwards. And uh, what is interesting is that, as you can see, this is a very typical Japanese side uh, uh, settlement, but in an in a area, but uh, so we, but in an area that is can be defended by most of the areas by by, by sea, and the Portuguese were have built a maritime empire, so it, for them it was the, the so these peninsulas were the, the good proposition. So the city, this was the Uchimachi, the, the first first settlement, and then what was called the Sotomachi uh, outside. When 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 um, Toyota Hideyoshi nationalized. Uh, Nagasaki in 1587, uh, he nationalized only what the existing part, which was this. But the, as it was a great trade center, it kept growing, kept growing, and uh, it developed along Omura, Omura territories. And then Tokugawa Ieyasu in 1606 claimed to the to the Bakufu all of this area, and that was the way how uh, Omura Yoshiaki, uh, Don Sancho, the second daimyo of Omura, baptized, apostatized because he. He considered that the Jesuits were guilty of that, uh, of that, of that, and that this is the final map of the bay. And just to remember, what is also different is that the first, the first neighborhoods were in a very flat, flat area, as it proper of Japan, as we can see by many examples of nowadays Japanese cities like these six from uh, main cities like Tokyo or Kyoto, or for small cities like Kamakura close to Kyo, or Otsu in the Biwa Lake or Odawara in the, close to the ocean and close, not very far from Tokyo or Shimabara. So all, all me, great metropolis or small, uh, or small cities, all in flat, they are conceived to be, uh, to evolve in a flat area, but Nagasaki is different. Because despite to be the first neighborhoods to be built in a Japanese style, it was based in, in a wrong position for, from a Japanese perspective, but in a right perspective from from an a Portuguese, from the Portuguese development and from the Portuguese overseas activities. And so Nagasaki, this is one of the views taken from the other side of the bay and now from, from the, now the ocean is there, the, the, the starting point of Nagasaki was something close to here. So it was here that the Biombo were conceived and, and I'm, I, I'm not sure if the painters painted everything there, but it was there that they watched what they wanted to represent. And what they are representing is curiosity. So we know very well, we know very well how important was for Japan the arrival of the, of the, of the Portuguese. I would remember, for example, in 1993, the, there was a number of science a journal from the United States that dedicated only to science in Japan. And it was opened with a foreword of the His Majesty Emperor Akihito. 
and uh, well, it was signed by him, so it was the official vision of the Imperial House about uh, what was the history of science, Japanese science. And uh, the first paragraph is about China and about how Japan imported uh, Chinese culture and civilization in the 6th, 7th, 7th, 8th centuries. And the second paragraph was about Portuguese. So this is this, uh, the, the, this development. And so one of the things that we know from the, from the first sources is how, how the people was surprised with the ship, with the people who was coming with the objects they were carrying. And this surprise that we are now, what the indicates I can and show about, about uh, the Japanese, I, can, I have sources that show the same in Africa, in Asia, in all, all parts of Asia, or in America. And that's important because nowadays we have a, a, a stupid discussion, I'm sorry, but a stupid discussion about what was discoveries. And the, 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 the rejection of the idea of discoveries because everybody was not discovered because everybody knew that they existed. Well, it's, it's true that everybody knew that they existed, but everybody this realized that there were other guys that they didn't know. They discovered the rest of the world through the Europeans, in this case, through the Europe, through the, this woman is discovering. So the word discoveries is not, is a word that must be perceived as a global idea and not as an European idea. In every moment, in every moment, uh, the discoveries were played more by the Europeans, but in, in, a, in, a, in a sense that when they arrived anywhere, they were discovered. Uh, they were exotic. Uh, the, most, the most exotic uh, persons of the 16th century in the world and 17th were the Europeans, not the others, because the Europeans were considered exotic by the American Indians, by the African people, by all Asian, Asian, Asian groups, as the Japanese called them the Nambanjin, so the barbarians from the south. Barbarians, the kind of exotic, exotic is different, different and poor comparing to ourselves, of course. So discoveries, we are speaking about discoveries and what I, I, I use very, much, very often this image because for me is one of the most strong images about how all these events uh, were interesting. So this is the woman that is at home, but is looking, trying to understand what is going on. And uh, if, who is coming are the Portuguese, in this specific ship, the Kurofne, as it is spoken in the Japanese sources of that time. So the black ship, because, of, because it, it looked like this. It was due to the way it was prepared to, to support, to support the, the ocean. And so this is a big ship. This is a big ship that was carrying, was carrying uh, the world in, in its side, inside him. Because uh, when the Portuguese arrived to Japan, and, as we, and even you can see by this, elements here, for example. This, is not a, this was not an European ship. The, the boat, the ship itself had been built in India and the crew had a few Europeans, of course, but also African slaves or free people. I'm, both can exist, but African people and Asian people, Cambodians, Indians, whatever. So uh, this is, uh, and as I'm going to show, they were not carrying mostly European goods. Actually, the most important product that was coming in this ship was Chinese silk. What has been traded by pepper that they had bought in Sumatra, which was carried by cotton tissues that they had brought from India. So this is, a, this is a inter-Asian uh, trade that arrived, arrived to Japan, and, but produced by the Europeans. So this is the ship it is, a, it is a very strong ship uh, during the 16th century. Um, no Asian power was able to, to attack it successfully. Uh, it was attacked, for example, in 1565 when, they were, when it was in Fukuda, in another harbor close to Nagasaki. It was attacked by the Hirado, uh, Hirado fleet and he supported it in the, the, he, won, he won the battle. It won the battle. And uh, during the 16th century, only a few ships were lost in typhoons. Not, not by war. When the Dutch arrived to, to, to Asia with the other kind of European warships, they, they, they dismantled this, 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 this route easily because these ships were ready to support uh, Asian competi competition, not other Europeans' competition. So we, we have a ship is arriving, and in the ship is, are arriving the Portuguese, not properly the Portuguese, the Nambanjin. This is one of this is in national. This is a biombo which is in, here in Lisbon in the National Art Museum, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to publish uh, within two weeks, two months 
a book called Portugal in History uh, and Identity. It's about the history of Portugal, as an, not, not the history of Portugal, all the facts, but how, how the, the identity of Portugal evolves from the well, beginning of our existence as a country until today. And this is my, this is the image I showed, I choose, chose to the front, front of, of the book. Uh, why? Because this is our identity. We are the Portuguese, yes. Look, look here, we have here a Portuguese, all, all dressed in the same way, so they are look the same. These are Caucasians, these two and this guy are Caucasians for sure. But these three youngers are all Asians. So the Japanese artists realized that most of the young people who was traveling was from Asian mothers because that is one of the specificities of the Portuguese overseas expansion of the 16th century. It was a male question, not a female question. Most of the, most of the ships were only with, the, with men because there was not a classical colonization as it was happened in the, since the beginning by the Spaniards, the Dutch or the English. Not in the case of the Portuguese, even for the, even for the 17th century, the, we guess that for each hundred men who left, only five women left. So most of the men kept marrying or kept having child, having the sexual interaction with women, but with uh, local women, of course, Americans, Africans or Asians. So, we see that the Portuguese are not necessarily Europeans. And look at the, the slaves. We may, may believe that they are slaves, but the, oh, it, despite the slaves, they look like the Portuguese. Looking at, looking from, from back, they, look, they, they seem all equals. Then we have to look close to see that they are different. And these differences, but look, they carry animals, special animals that everybody wants to see, that they, they don't exist in Japan. So. All this is exotic. Uh, and these are, and look, other thing that is exotic, this small object in Japanese nowadays, Botan, because it was introduced by the Portuguese. And there was no African, no Asian civilization who was using uh, Botan to, to dress. So it was uh, it's an, it's something new that we see in uh, Indian statues in China or in Japan. So it was. All this was, was surprising. The hat, uh, maybe in this case, uh, we don't have crosses, but most of them also with crosses because they are Christians, but we come there to the, Christ, to the case that they are Christians. So and where, are, where are they coming from? That's another question. And this is very interesting because it's the soul number Mbiombu, where uh, the artists try to guess how was that country from where the Portuguese were coming. That country is not Portugal, that country is India. Look, the elephants. Yeah. And they're very interesting because it's the sole Biom Nambam Biombu, which has a stone building. Because the others, how they, how, how they, why they represent uh, Japan, only wood buildings, of course. And this is very interesting because uh, uh, within two a week and a half, on the 26th, I shall be in New Delhi uh, making a lecture. Uh, I was invited by a Indian university with the support of Japan Foundation to speak about the beginning of the relation, direct relations between India and Japan, because they were started through that ship, through the Portuguese. So it was through the Portuguese that India and Japan started having direct connections. And I was invited to, to make a lecture because of that, uh, what is for me is, is funny. Uh, so the, they are coming from India and they are traders. That is, that is the main goal of this. Uh, in all this, in all this, in all this uh, Biombo we see, this disembarkment, disembarkment of all the goods from what was, it was the world that the Japanese didn't know yet that was being disembarked. Don't forget that before the arrival of the Portuguese and the, the outside world was called like the Sankoku, no? three countries, uh, China, Korea, and Siam, no connections. And after the Portuguese arrival, it moved to the idea to the Bankoku, so 10,000 that in case you could count less, count less countries. So it is, it's a, it's a, it's a really a shock. And the disembarkment is represented everywhere. So these are the traders, the traders that pay respect, that pay respect to the, um, to the official. So there is, there is a, um, a parade when, when the captain arrives uh, to, pay, to pay tribute to the authorities of the city. Don't forget the city officially belonged out first to Omuro Sumitada, to, to the, the daimyo. In 1580, he offered, when he was very pressed by Ryuzoji Takanobu in the, in the peak of the Sengoku Jidai, uh, he, was, he offered the city to the, to the, the Jesuits. 
who ruled the city from 1580 to 1587. Then in 1587, after the conquest of Kyushu by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Hideyoshi issued the first anti-Christian law. And at the same time, he nationalized uh, Nagasaki. And uh, he, there was a representative of the shogunate, the, of, the, of Hideyoshi first, and then of the shogunate after, after 1603. And uh, the Portuguese, when they arrived, they paid respect to the authorities, representative of the state uh, in, in this. And I, I shall come back, but look, uh, again, these um, screens, in these screens, the artists uh, emphasize, emphasize what is strange, what is new. And one of the things is this connection between man and dogs. It's essentially from mankind, of course. Yes, we know for 30,000 years that men and men and dogs uh, are, are together. But the European civilization was the one who brought this connection, this interaction, strong, uh, early, very, very close. In the medieval times, we have maybe in even the chronicles mentions that the king was sleeping with the dogs, even when when they go hunting and so on. So they're very close. And uh, we, have, we have dogs in uh, many paintings of, of, of paintings of, of authority, the pictures of the kings, whatever, many times with dogs. And look, they are carrying, they are carrying the dogs they, when they disembark. So dogs were, were, were traveling with them or they get the dogs anywhere. But as, 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 a, as a personal connection, it's not an animal that is there because uh, oh, it exists and we don't kill it. But no, it, it, it's something this personal is carried by a servant at a parrot at the same time and all the gifts that they are bringing they are bringing to the to the officials now look how they are dressed this is july august we know atsui this name atsui so hot hot and wet at the same time look at them poor poor guys with those all these dresses all because they sweat terribly as is usual even nowadays in of all of us when we are in japan at that time so um, they are traders, and now we have uh, all the, the the shops where the silks they are bringing are. But now, like to, they are trading, they are exotic. And do two, two two very important things. First, peacock. Huh? So it's from India, not from Europe. It's an Indian animal. So I, I insist in this because this is not European expansion in the sense that these Europeans that are bringing Europe to us anyway in in a in a very specific, uh, in a tube. No, this is a, um, this movement of the discoveries, it was the movement of globalization. Putting, uh, it, it was uh, John Russell Wood, an American scholar, who used, an, he, he published a book in 1992 that I enjoy very much, whose title is A World in a Move. The world is a move, is the world, not, not, the part, not Europeans, not the world, the world in a move. Everybody is, is moving from one side to the other. And um, so the Portuguese, when they arrive to Japan, they introduce also this Indian animal. And an object, very specific object, the chair. Uh, nowadays, the chair is something common to everybody. But uh, uh, when first time I went to Japan in 1991, I still had to have lunch without chairs. It was painful, you believe me. For me, it was painful to be on my knees uh, in, a, in a very, very nice restaurant with a with tie and everything, and on my knees, it was, it was hard. For the Portuguese at that time, it was also hard, so they brought the chairs for them, because it's much more easy for us. So the two kinds of chairs, as we can see, that's interesting. One kind of, this is because it can be open, look, they are already seated, and they are carrying. It's very interesting because, you know, oh, it's, why this is important or not? Don't forget, chair in, in Europeans in European mind is power, the throne, the world of the thrones. That that, that great city there for those people who like that kind of mystical uh, movies. But uh, the throne in, in in Europe, the throne, the chair is a sign is a, is an example of uh, power. It's very interesting because when uh, Alessandro Valignano, the visitor of the Jesuits, visited the central Japan in 1581, and he met Oda Nobunaga. He offered him a great state chair. And Louis Freud, who was, who is the chronicle, the Jesuit chronicle of all those events, reports that uh, when Nobunaga in 1581 made a great parade in Miyako, Kyoto nowadays, um, that he was bringing, he was on, on his horse, 
But on his front, it was four people who was care, were carrying the chair that Valignano had offered him. In a certain moment of the parade, he made a stop and he was a seated in the chair to show a Japanese seated in a chair. So something new to improve, to improve his uh, authority and his, his impression over, over his subject. So Gordon of Naga was a, a very special man because it was a military genius, because he started uh, the, the end of the of his centenary civil war in Japan, and because he perceived that he, he could use uh, exotic as a way of reinforcement of his own power. Then Hideyoshi and all the Tokugawa didn't didn't go didn't go in the same way, and so they refused. They refused. They preferred to be traditionalists. Nobunaga was not. Uh, that's why he started a new movement. That's why he was betrayed and he lost. So again, the dog, again, the dog. So different kind of dogs, but always the dogs. And just to be sure that this is not an invention, they don't forget they are exotic and that they are Christians. This is not, this is not from the Namban Biombu. It's the sole one that is not. This is from a, from a fan. Uh, it's, and it depicts the, the church of the Jesuits in, in Miyako. Uh, by 1575, 1580, so in the Nobunaga's time. Um, so, in what's important, this is does for what we are used to today. This doesn't look a church. This is a pagoda, or this looks like a temple, Buddhist temple. Of course, because they were in Japan, they had to respect the tradition, and the buildings were built by Japanese people who was not able to do to do to build a church like in Europe. They have no they have no skills for that. So this is, this is a, a Buddhist temple with a cross over. This, this is the first symbol with the tatami. No, no, sorry. So we people praying and now look inside. Here we have a priest preaching, catechism, and look inside the same Japanese paintings, the tatami, those, and finally, only the altar and the objects for mass, they are Europeans. Everything else is Japanese. So um, it was, so the, the um, Namban Byombu also reflect the importance Christianity got in Nagasaki and in Japan. Don't forget that in 1600, in the eve of the Sekigara battle, uh, there were about 300,000 baptized people uh, in Japan, according to the, Je the Jesuit accounts. And in all these fifths that are in black, uh, it's on Daimyo, was baptized. I'm not telling that he was Christian, in the sense I am, but he was baptized. So he, it was officially a Christian. In most of them, like here in Mino, the, um, it was, this was ruled by a, a grandson of uh, Nobunaga. It's, it, it, it's, there were no priests because the judge had no priests for so many territories because the number of daimyo getting baptism, it was growing in a certain moment from 1590 to 1600, grew very quickly. But uh, it was, the, we had daimyo baptized through over the country from Tsuchima to the north of uh, Onshu, from Kyushu to Shikoku. So even this, uh, this is the area of the Hojo and the Hojo were not baptized, but they were at that time very tolerant towards uh, Christianity too. So it was a moment when uh, Christianity uh, had a chance. Uh, curiously, uh, Hideyoshi, as well as uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu, they banned Christianity with this, with the, because they were afraid, and understandably, uh, that the, 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 the Christian daimyo could make a federation, a league against, against United to get power. But actually, if you see what was happened in all the civil war, including the decisive moment, which was the Sekigara battle, Christians never made a league. They were Christians in both sides of the, in the battlefield. And uh, because Christianity was not never, during those 55 decades, was never a political issue. So the daimyo didn't, didn't, didn't give up of their loyalties, political loyalties and family loyalties due to, to Christianity. So they, they fought brothers against brothers if necessary, according to the daimyo, to their Lord, and not according to the, the religion that they had professed. I have not much more time. So, um, don't forget also something very important, and this is my last um, picture about the Biombus, that the, the importance of the church 
is noted also because and this because Japanese were also Jesuits. Uh, in this number, we have two young people as brothers. They should be brothers here and here. He maybe even is not a brother, maybe it's just a dojuku who is serving tea to the priest who is uh, preaching or giving catechism to another Japanese person. But um, this figure, we believe that is a representation of another a very, very, very famous Jesuit who was Brother Lorenzo. Brother Lorenzo was a, a player of Biwa. Uh, who, who was, was baptized by Francis Xavier and became a Jesuit in 1556. Uh, and he was the right arm of uh, Freud, Luis Freud, in Kyoto when the Jesuits approached to Oda Nobunaga. So he is the hero of the history of Japan of Freud. Jap Luis Freud wrote a um, history of Japan, uh, five in, our, in, our, in our Portuguese edition, uh, five volumes uh, chronicle, which is much more a chronicle about Japan than about the mission, about the mission. All the words of Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and before uh, are there written. And it has a, there is a hero, a moment, uh, um, be, but because the way he gets conversions and the way he gets uh, some moments of, of uh, even of humor in, 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 when, 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 the, the, when the description uh, is very tense. And that is Brother Lorenzo, who was one of the most famous, and maybe he is him who is represented in his biombo. So I showed you a number of characteristics of the Jesuit, of the Portuguese and of the relations between the Portuguese and the Japanese, which were represented in the Namban Biombu. But uh, just before finishing, just to show something that was not pointed out in the Biombu and asking why. First, the introduction of, introduction of medicine, uh, Western medicine, of course. Uh, this is a statue in Oita, late, uh, 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 and previously Funai, the, the, the siege of the Otomo. Uh, Otomo Sorino, Otomo Yoshishige, was one of the first daimyo who gave support to the Jesuits. Um, he, he, in, by the 58, 50th 70s, he controlled seven of the nine uh, provinces of Kyushu, but then he didn't, uh, was able, he wasn't able to conquest Yuga and uh, he lost for the Shimazu. And, as, and then Ryuzo Takanobu emerged in the north, and he was in a poor position. But before, in, during that time, in Oita, it was one of the first centers of the Jesuits in Japan. And in the park, it is remembered that uh, Luis Dalmaida, another Jesuit, was the introducer of Western medicine in Japan. That doesn't appear in the, in the Biombo, Namban Biombo. Uh, why? Because when in 17th century, there were hospitals in Nagasaki, but they were not perceived to have something new because it was already introduced in the city and it, it, it was not noticed by the artists. Christian, Christian art was, Christian art was um, developed by, even in an European style in Japan. This is a lacquer wood, lacquer wood uh, piece. It looks like, like very European, look, look to the Christ, but it is not. It was, it was painted in Japan, we know, by a Japanese. But look, I don't know if you can look well, but look to the face of Jesus. Uh, look to the face of Jesus. If it was being painted here in Europe, that Jesus was suffering because it is realistic. And in Europe, particularly in, in, in Iberia, we, the Catholics, we, we emphasize, particularly the Spaniards, but also the Portuguese, we emphasize the suffering of the Christ in the cross uh, to the salvation. Despite what is the, 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 the key of the faith, is not the death of Jesus, but the resurrection. If he didn't resurrection, it was a man like the others, uh, with a good, good, good speech, but not more than that, not God. So, but in Asia and in Japan again, there is a serenity in his face and that we can now compare with the enlightenment of the Buddha. Here in India, anywhere, it is impossible to an Asian to accept a God suffering. And so, um, but this also doesn't appear in the Namban Biombo. This is for art. And finally, I'm sorry. And finally, it also not it is not pointed out in in the Biombo the tepo, the rifle, the musket, which was the, this is a statue that is in Tanegashima, the, the island where the Portuguese arrived first. This is a statue of the of the Tono who was ruling the island when the Portuguese arrived and who is remembered 
as a, as a samurai, of course, but with a musket in his hand. Because this N here representation of the first battle in world history, which was won due to the fire of the muskets, which was the Battle of Nagashino, 1575, Nobunaga against the Takeda, the Takeda group. And when Nobunaga, in only 30 years, perceived what Europeans took 100 years to understand, separate the muskets, make fire in different moments, and you are firing anytime. And destroy, he destroyed the cavalry and infantry of the Takeda by that way. So it was when, when, so when, when the, when the artists arrived to Nagasaki, uh, the, the, the muskets are something that is Japanese already. That's not, despite having been imported as a technology, all the development is already Japanese. So it is not exotic. It is not, it is not emphasized. It is not emphasized by the Biombo. Just to remember. Um, I'm sorry, that no, still nowadays, uh, every year in August in Tanegashima, the arrival of Portuguese is remembered by this festival of the Teppo. And on the left is the, uh, one of the descriptions is in Pregrinação de Fernandes Pinto was one of the early Portuguese who arrived there. But to end, just to, after the Biombo, what happened? After Biombo, because then the Portuguese were expelled because the Portuguese traders insisted to keep uh, giving support to the missionaries. In a few years from after the ban of 1614, still bringing in the Kurofune some missionaries and clandestinely to, en to, en to enter in, in Japan. Uh, and so the Portuguese were expelled finally in 1639. But the, the Catholics perceived, persisted, and uh, they, 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 without, without the, the control of any, any European, they evolved his uh, Christian art. This is, uh, this is a painting of the Kakure Christian, discovered in uh, the area of Shimabara. And um, I enjoyed it very much. It's the Annunciation. Annunciation. So there is God, the angel, look the wings, and Mary accepting, yes, I'm going, I accept to be the mother of Jesus, of the Savior. And this is Kitizgizi, so the Savior is already here. I'm sorry. So the, the, the wings of the angel, God, Mary, and already the baby Jesus that should be inside, inside her, but now it's catechesis itself. But it is, this is the Annunciation. So that why, that's how the Kakwere Christian in the first century perceived. I, I've been once in Irado a few years ago. And when the Kakwere Christian uh, were rediscovered by the end of 19th century after the reopening of Japan to uh, abroad, um, they, they, they made the sign of the cross, but every, it was an animism. It was a, an animism that was evolved differently from, from Shinto or from Buddhism, but uh, completely out of, and, and as you know, a part of those Kakure Christian came back inside the church. Others kept, it was so different that they preferred to keep, to keep their, their living in their beliefs that they, that they evolved. But in the beginning, they came from here. They came from this, they came from this uh, message. So that's why, that's what I would like to, show you. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting lecture on the bio and how to read them more closely than we are used to do. Um, there's now some time <clears throat> for questions or remarks. Um, that's also possible from an online position using Zoom, I understand. Are there any questions in the room here? Not necessarily. Uh, well, maybe I can start out with one. Um, <clears throat> you you showed the um, uh, the chairs. <clears throat> Actually, the the chairs are <clears throat> according. I mean, in my perception, they are not uh, European chairs, but uh, lacquered uh, Chinese chairs. Now the in the Zen in the Zen Buddhism establishment, uh, abbots used to be represented sitting on chairs of the same make and, and construction. So I guess that the chair as such was already known in Japan, maybe indeed as a seat of authority because only abbots were represented sitting mm -hmm. on it. But that the chair as such, although as a very rare thing, had been introduced 
in Japan, let's say from the Kamakura period onwards. Mm -hmm. um, so, but maybe uh, the, the, the populace did not make that connection. And when yeah. they saw Oda Nobunaga with the chair, mm -hmm. there were very few people uh, possibly who, who made that connection with the Zen practice of yes. sitting on chairs. And for them, it was something new. Yes, yes I think so, because that's why, that's why the, um, they are represented. Otherwise, this they should not, not be represented. Yeah. <laughs> and with the emphasis that he's even a, a servant carrying one, <laughs> On his back, you know, some, and how they represent the Portuguese uh, uh, city, city in chairs is something that it has. It, because everything that is pict depicted yeah. is what is new, new yeah. for, for, for them. Well, the mere fact, I suppose, of sitting on chairs for people other, you know, other than an abbot sitting in a, a ritual posi ceremonial yeah. position was probably completely new to yes. them. And, yes, uh, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes, uh, Hamish. Mm -hmm. uh, just a minute, the, the, uh, use the microphone, please. Yes. Sorry? Pantaloons that they wear seem very exaggerated, unless that was the fashion in Portugal, mm -hmm. I think. They, they, they look very close to what we know that even it was dressed in Asia as a whole. And even in, in here in Europe, so they are, they they look great, actually yes. And um, of course, that there are some things that they exaggerate. For example, the um, the way how the African slaves uh, are in, in the ropes of the ships, uh, with many that, that is a little bit exaggerated because they were maybe because they were surprised uh, for the agility they had. For example, the noses of the Europeans are exaggerated because they were bigger, and so it is something that is. Uh, uh, stressed, but concerning concerning maybe the 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 trousers the, 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 the trousers trous are a little bit is but more or less it is the, it is the same we see in statues and we see even in uh, many other paintings made by others not not Japanese. Would it be fair to say that actually the kind of West or Portuguese culture that the Japanese saw was actually Goan culture. Some part, yes, yeah. yes, some, 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 yes. The Portuguese could not dress exactly like that if they were in Europe, yes. And they were bringing them a lot of experiences mm -hmm. that were from from other parts of Asia, mm -hmm. much more than from Europe, yes. So in a certain way, yes. And the question is, of course, because I don't know much or anything about Goa. To what extent Goa was by that time already kind of cultural entity in yes, itself yes, with yes, a cultural it was the capital. identity. It was the capital. Yeah. Yes, yes. It was a great city with about 100,000 people. It was the center, uh, political, military, uh, ecclesiastical of the Portuguese yeah. in, in all Asia. Yeah. It was yeah. the capital. So yes, there is a court with the viceroy. Uh, so it was a very, very, very important. From that perspective, it was a very significant place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where Portuguese or European culture was melted already with many Asian, many Asian, Indian, particular Asian as a whole um, actions, uh, uh, whatever. The the, the man with the cock in the in the cage, uh, the the rooster, uh, uh, does that have anything to do with the practice of organizing cockfighting on on ships? Because one comes across. Yes, it was, It is possible. It uh, is possible. I don't know where and when it was introduced into Japan. Maybe in that time. For it sure, was, it happened at that time because for other things like, like gambling with cards yeah, also it yeah. was introduced, but it is not represented here. Yeah, no, no. But the, the cock maybe maybe had been used for fights. Yes, no. because it happened in America at the same time, both in Brazil as well as in yeah. uh, Spanish uh, areas of yeah. the Spanish Empire. Okay, any other questions, please? Yes. Hello, Professor. I have a question uh, concerning the custom, the floral prints. Is there any special floral prints on the custom of the Portuguese? That is very typical theirs, because in Vietnam, there was a very particular floral prints that were the mm -hmm. Portuguese wear that eventually it became the nickname of the Portuguese. Mm. And the flower is called sweet potato flower. And then mm. later on, Christianity is called 
the 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 law of the the people who wearing that floral. Mm -hmm. So that I don't know, Kim. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 that I don't I don't know. Um, so specific topic I don't. I don't know. Thank you. No. Okay. Um. So I think uh, we'll have to cut it here. Um. Thank you very much for your interesting questions. The fantastic presentation. And uh, I think this was a befitting uh, keynote lecture. Thank you very much. So much. Uh, we now have time for a uh, coffee break. Um, I sacrificed part of the coffee break, but we'll shorten it a little bit beyond. Not that many, I take it, that we'll have enough time in a quarter of an hour to consume our coffee or tea. And then we uh, start again according to the schedule at 11.30. Thank you very much. <laughs>